and as the former chief law enforcement in this country, you're going to vote for someone who is facing 88 criminal counts. Oh, look, the 88 criminal counts, a lot of those are, in my, and I've said... Even if are, 10 of them are accurate? Uh, the answer to the question is yes. So shout out to Caitlin for that interview because she definitely did a good job holding Bill Barr's feet to the fire. But, Caitlin, how was your response to that last question? Not... What the hell is wrong with you? You're telling me that you're going to vote for a guy, <laughs> for a guy who just throws out the Constitution, right? I'm bigger than the Constitution. I don't care that I lost. I'm going to steal the election. You're going to vote for that guy because you disagree on policy with the other guy? We have the Constitution on one hand and a difference of policy, which we're supposed to communicate with and meet somewhere in the middle. But no, 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 no. You fuck faces don't want that. You want to vote for the guy who wants to be a dictator on day one. Kiss my ass. All right, guys, so we got to talk about this pretty hilarious interview on CNN between uh, former Trump Attorney General Bill Barr and Caitlin Collins. Now, this interview is hilarious because Caitlin Collins is going to get visibly upset and triggered by the fact that Bill Barr, despite his Trump derangement, uh, is not a never Trumper, right? In the sense that if it comes down to voting between Joe Biden and Trump for president of the United States, Bill Barr has declared that he's going to vote for Trump. Even though him and Trump do not have a good relationship, uh, their relationship soured heavily um, after the election. And he has been pretty anti-Trump uh, ever since then. But now uh, he's coming out and saying that regardless of not having a good relationship with Trump, I'm still going to vote for the guy because Joe Biden is a bigger threat to this country than Trump. And again, this is not what CNN wanted to hear. So clearly and obviously, they're going to push back against Bill Barr because he's not saying what they want him to say. So I want to react to it. But before we get into it, we have to have a word from the sponsor of this video, Virtual Shield. Can you imagine your cell phone company leaking your social security number? Well, that's what happened to 63,000 individuals who had their private data exposed during a recent data breach. A rogue employee at a telecommunications company leaked private information like names, social security numbers, addresses, phone numbers, social security numbers, and other personal details. This is why I protect myself with today's sponsor, Virtual Shield, and I absolutely love them. Virtual Shield helps protect my private information from the prying eyes of cyber criminals, data mining companies, tech giants, rogue ISPs, and more. It takes just two clicks to protect myself with Virtual Shield's VPN on any of my devices, which includes anonymous browsing, a strict no-log policy, military-grade encryption, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited devices, and built-in ad blocking. Thanks again to Virtual Shield for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to sign up today by visiting virtualshield.com BCP or simply clicking my link below in the description because every sign-up gets 67% off and a 60-day risk-free trial response to you saying you'd vote for the Republican ticket. Wow. Former AG Bill Barr, who let a lot of great people down by not investigating voter fraud in our country, has just endorsed me for president, despite the fact that I call him, called him weak, slow moving, lethargic, gutless and lazy. Based on the fact that I greatly appreciate his wholehearted endorsement, I am removing the word lethargic from my statement. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> yeah. It's classic Trump. What's the question? What's your response? My response? Well, I mean, obviously, what I said was that I'm very disappointed that this country is stuck with this choice between two people who I don't think either of them uh, should be president of the United States. But given that binary choice, uh, I feel I have to choose Trump. But he's mocking you. So? It's not about me. I, I think that... Uh, that I've said this all along, if faced with a choice between two people, neither of which I think should be president, I feel it's my duty to pick the person who I think would do the least damage to the country. And I respect the hell out of that, right? I mean, again, you may not necessarily agree with Bill Barr on everything, right? Or, you know, his Trump derangement, but I can respect the hell out of the fact that this guy says, you know what, I'm going to put my own personal feelings aside, okay? Even though I don't like the guy, at the end of the day, I know that he's best for the country. 
if the decision is between him and Joe Biden. I have nothing but respect for that. And I think that that's how most people who are never Trump Republicans or Nikki Haley fans, I feel like that is how they should rationalize voting for Trump, right? If you're on the right, if you're a conservative and you're saying, well, I don't want to vote for Trump because I don't like his attitude, even though you like his policies, you know, that his policies are better than Joe Biden. For you to come out here and to vote for Joe Biden or to not vote for Trump because you don't like his attitude, I think is wrong. I think it is selfish. And you're putting your own feelings ahead of the well-being of the country. I really do feel that way. You don't have to like the guy 100%, but if you know that his policies are better, if you know that he's better for the country, then I think that you have an obligation to... Say, hey, I need to put my feelings aside and to vote in the direction that is going to make this country better. And that's why I said with Bill Barr, I respect the hell out of what he's doing because there are a lot of never Trumpers that are not doing that. Right. They're saying, well, I'm going to put my feelings over the fact that I know that Trump is better for the country than Joe Biden. So, you know, again, you might not like Bill Barr, you know, but. I do respect the hell out of him for uh, saying this because this is how I think a lot of never Trumpers need to rationalize doing the right thing this November, which I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of them do. Right. I hope a lot of them get over it and they do the right thing for the country. And I think Trump would do less damage than Biden. And I think all this stuff about a threat to democracy. I think the real threat to democracy is the progressive movement and the, and the Biden administration. The Biden administration or President Biden himself? Biden's, Biden's support for the progressive agenda. I think a lot of people hear that. And the case that we just talked about that went before the Supreme Court, essentially, and say, how can you see that and say that Biden is a greater threat to democracy? Because, well, who's, where, where are we losing our freedoms? How are our freedoms being constrained? They're being constrained by uh, the press, progressive government and... Uh, you know, democracy, especially, you know, from the Anglosphere democracies, the five eyes and so forth, the threat's never been for autocratic government on the right. But how specifically right is Biden man. threatening democracy? The, the threat to, to freedom and democracy has always been on the left. It's the collectivist, socialist uh, agenda. And that is where we're losing our freedom. Parents are losing the freedom to control uh, their children's education. Uh, and, uh, you know, people can't speak their mind without losing their jobs and things like that. Yeah. And also Bill Barr, I know he's struggling to articulate the reasons why Biden is a threat to democracy, but let me help you out here, Bill. Uh, it's not just the Biden administration that is a threat to democracy. It is the Democrat party as a whole. Okay. They are a threat to our Republic and our way of life. Okay. Because they're trying to undermine the sovereignty and integrity of our institutions. And they're trying to do that at every level uh, of our society. Uh, the Democrats don't even believe in democracy in their own party. For example, the uh, Democrat primary has essentially been rigged for years. Okay. They rigged it against Bernie twice and then they rigged it again uh, this year. Okay. Against anybody that was trying to run against Joe Biden. They literally were keeping people off ballots, right? They were like, no, you can't get on the ballot in this state or that state uh, so that Joe Biden went unchallenged for the most part. So again, there's not democracy in their own primaries, first and foremost. Second of all, uh, Joe Biden ignoring Supreme Court rulings on multiple occasions when it came to the um, rent moratorium that happened during the pandemic. This guy ignored the Supreme Court initially when they said, no, 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 uh, people actually have to start paying rent again. OK, uh, he ignored that. Uh, he ignored the Supreme Court when it comes to uh, student loan debt forgiveness. He's also weaponized the federal government to try to strong arm social media companies into censoring speech that the White House disagrees with. OK, so, again, all of these things are threats to democracy uh, on top of the fact that uh, clearly and obviously the political persecutions against Trump are coming from the Democrats. Right. And the Democrat Party. And they're using that to try to rig the outcome of the 2024 election. So these are all just a few reasons why Biden is actually the real threat to democracy that uh, Bill Barr should have outlined here in this interview. But, you know, I get where he's coming from. Okay. I understand where he's coming from. 
Uh, I think that it's enough that he just triggered CNN by basically saying that, no, 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 Biden's actually the real threat. Remember, they were triggered before by RFK uh, going on the network and saying that, hey, I can make an argument that Biden is actually the real threat to democracy over Trump. They really don't like that. This is worse than the McCarthy era. Where is that coming from? It's not coming from the right. Those two things that you just noted there, you believe are worse than a president of the United States trying to subvert the will of the people by overturning the results no, of the I, election? I, no, I think a, I think a country, all the things together, like we're not enforcing our, our borders, so we have open borders, we have lawlessness uh, in, in our cities, uh, we have regulations coming fast and furious, so telling people what kind of stoves they can use and what kinds of cars they have to drive and, you know, eliminating cars and, 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 and so forth. Uh, yeah, those are, the, those are the threats to democracy. But, but President Biden is not in control of what some school boards across the country are He's doing. He's using the administrative argument, but, what, but what are these how major, is that the same well, thing? Well, major changes are being made in our country without, without the democratic process, and they're being made by bureaucrats in these agencies. You, okay, uh, pause. You, you cannot argue that Republicans across the country are not doing that as well. In my own hometown, there's a huge fight at the library over which books kids can read. This is not something that is a there's single party been, fight. Do you think there are... There should, don't you think there should be some limits on, on what people are able to read at very young people, ages? I just think people look at what you're saying and they don't. Well, and, some people and, and might. Maybe, maybe even Republicans who have concerns about what's happening with school boards or, you know, the culture and don't maybe abortion even don't equate that with with January 6th and Trump's efforts. When you told him he, the, the election was not stolen and he still went out there and said it was stolen and led a lot of people to believe that. They don't, those things aren't equal. It feels like a false equivalency. Well, I, I disagree. I think. Yeah. So uh, you see now you heard that. Okay. So Kaylin Collins there, instead of just being, you know, a journalist and just asking the questions and getting the answers. No, no, no. She has to fight Bill Barr on why is he voting for Trump? Despite, you know, disagreeing with Trump when it comes to the election and despite, you know, saying all these bad things about Trump, why are you still voting for Trump anyways, <laughs> right? Again, why are you so triggered by it? You know, it's so funny. If this guy comes out and he says that, hey, I'm going to vote for Biden, there will be no pushback, right? That's the funny part about these people in the mainstream liberal media that claim to be so unbiased, right? And that they're objective, that, you know, they are on one side, they're, they're just on the side of facts. Had this guy really just come out and say, hey, I'm going to vote for Biden, there would have been zero pushback or questioning in regards to, well, why are you doing that? Why are you voting for Joe Biden? It, it would have been nothing but, well, you know, tell us how much you hate Trump, right? Tell us how much you dislike Trump. But it, it would not have been this combative, like, wait, why are you voting for Biden over Trump, right? Like, it, that's not what it would have been, okay? But this is what this interview was because this person says he's voting for Trump. Because he believes that Biden is worse. So, you know, I just find it to be hilarious uh, how even the most Trump deranged uh, in the Republican Party, some of them are still lining up and voting for Trump and how much that pisses off uh, the liberal media because they were praising Bill Barr. Now they have to take back that praise and they're going to start attacking him again now because he says he's going to vote for Trump. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.